David Vizard here, and you guys are watching Paratech 10. Just as a reminder, this is the channel that brings you hardcore tech accurately and functionally. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look at the situation concerning the availability of camshafts. Ever since the COVID-19 deal got well underway, things started to really fall off in terms of cam blanks that could be supplied. What this has done is as the stocks have run down, so the delivery time of camshafts have got significantly longer. Is there a solution for this? Well, not really, but there may be a solution for you professionals who need a camshaft for an engine build, kind of right now. We know that the camshaft is such an important deal that you can only get just so far through an engine build before it becomes absolutely necessary to install it. So, sure we've got our big sources like Comp Cams, Crane, Niski and uh, many others. Just can't think of them offhand. But, Here's a situation that, as far as I'm concerned, is that I continually, or this channel, continually has copy dates. Same with Andy's channel, Unity Motorsports. We both have copy dates to meet. And there's been several times when we have been stuck for a camshaft, and it has completely screwed up our itinerary. A situation like that has actually occurred just recently where we found that the cam that the engine builder had been sent by a well-known company was way off what it should have been. Way off. Don't know how they arrived at that spec. Anyway. We dynoed the, oh, I say we actually, Andy dynoed the engine. This was our 408 uh, uh, sleeper motor deal. I put the video, Unity Motorsports video, it'll go across the bottom here or across the top somewhere so that you can take a look at it. Now this engine made good power, but it was far off what it could have made. Basically the cam was probably ideal for a 12 and a half to one 350. It was going to turn, I don't know, maybe 7,200 RPM. What we had was 408 inches, and a cam for one won't work for the other, especially when the compression ratio on our 408 is 10.5 to 1. So, what we had was a camshaft which was way too wide on the lobe center line angles, and we needed one on for this spec of engine on a 106 lobe center line angle. Well, what are we going to do? <sighs> we could not stay on the dyno whilst one was being ground. It was needed for something else. However, we did have a tame cam grinder. Now I've used this guy a number of times and I've become pretty good pals with him, but his name is Steve Demas and he owns a company Demas Cams, who'd have thought. Now let me tell you a little bit about Steve. He used to work for John Reed, who unfortunately died in a plane crash. He was rebuilding a Boeing Stearman, that's a biplane trainer from pre-World War II. And I saw this plane, it was, they never made them like this new. It was absolutely spectacular. Anyway, whilst he was doing the maiden flight, something went wrong. I'm not sure what it was, but it crashed and he was killed. Now, I do know some guys that were there on that flight, and one of them said to me, he said, I was rooted to, to the ground in stark horror of watching this plane nosedive into the ground. He said, it's not something you can especially when it's a friend, it's not something that's very easy to describe. Well, I can imagine what it's like. Anyway, but the point's this. Steve 
has a career which spans 25 odd years grinding cup car cams. So he knows where it's at. Now, when John died, he bought some of the machinery, moved out of the area and set up a cam grinding uh, deal in an outbuilding at his house. Now, here's the deal. Steve knows lots and lots of people. If he doesn't have a blank, he starts on the phone to see if anybody has got a blank. Now, it may be a used blank, but you know, if it's a roller cam, which is what we want, that's not a big deal if you're going to regrind it. So, on many occasions, no, in fact, I think on all the occasions we've used him, in an emergency, he has managed to find a blank. We've used him in big blocks, big block Chevys, small block Fords, small block Chevys. Guy does a good job. Now, what I'm going to do, and I, let me say something here first. Just because Steve operates out of a workshop on his own premises, does not mean he does cheap camshafts, on the contrary. He does special deals for people. And you are going to pay a few dollars more. But ask yourself this question. Is it better to pay a bit more for a cam that you can now install in the engine or pay less for a cam that you're waiting for in three months' time? I don't need to answer that question for you. You can answer that yourself. So here's Steve's um, address coming up here, under here. Now then, let's go back and look at our motor here. We have dynoed it on Greg's dyno, and, uh, and I'll put the power curves up here. And it runs nice. The manifold that I designed, you'll have to go and see Andy's show for this. The manifold that I helped modify with the buildup of um, epoxy in the uh, plenum, to modify the plenum, worked very, very well. The manifold ended up with being almost as good at the top end as a race manifold and almost as good at the bottom end as a two-plane manifold. Not quite, but it was a very good compromise. And on the street, it worked very well because you don't need all that horsepower. But in the RPM range that you make a pass down the strip, it worked as if it was 90% of a Victor Junior. Good deal there. So go and watch Andy's channels on this. I'll, I'll put the deal across here. Now, we've chassis dynoed this car. And what we're going to do next is, and the cams arrived, what we're going to do next is get on the chassis dyno, which doesn't have a schedule, schedule, whichever the word is, to stick to as far as dyno time goes, and then see how much more power the right cam spec for a 408 and 10.5 to 1 and the cylinder heads on it produces compared with one that was intended for a high RPM 350 and is on two wider lobe center line angle. So that'll be in the next video. Now, what else have I got to quickly tell you about here that's relevant? Some good news from Evo Compulsion. That's Greg Gordon of Greg's Airplanes and Automobiles fame YouTube website. I probably mentioned it before, but Greg has got a um, automotive business that he uh, runs with. Uh, uh, it's a fam it's kind of a family business for the most part, and I modified the turbo housing housings for him. Did the story going back here. It's going on the dyno probably tomorrow. That's going to be uh, about the 18th of April. So, But he's already driven the car and he said that it makes enough difference that you can feel it almost the first moment you put your foot on the gas pedal. I told him it will, it will need, it will almost certainly need uh, reprogramming because it will alter the dynamics during the overlap period. Uh, and, and that will need um, uh, a different um, 
uh, ignition timing spec. Anyway, so I'm looking forward to that. Now, from my point of view, I can modify my EcoBoost Mustang and get, now I estimate it was about 20 horsepower it should give. Let's assume that it is, and from what Greg says, that sounds like about where it is. About 20 horsepower, 20 foot-pounds. I can get that gain on my Mustang for nothing. Now, here's the good thing. That's the gain to expect with the stock downpipe and, and catalytic converter on. Put a big, a big downpipe and catalytic converter on, and we could be looking at as much as 40 horsepower increase. Now, all of this is due to increasing the efficiency of the motor. It is not developing that much more pressures in the cylinders. What we're doing is we're decreasing the loss due to back pressure on the exhaust. This means that extra power comes with less stress, extra stress on the engine than would have been normally so. Now the last thing to report here before I sign off is our series on AFR's LS3 head. Now you will probably have seen in Andy's uh, program, on Unity Motorsports program, that it picked up power all the way through the RPM range except the peak. It lost about 15 to 20 horsepower up at the top end. And then past peak horsepower, it picked up over the stock head. Now then, why is this so? The reason for that is the camshaft in the motor favored the stock head more than the other head, the AFR heads. And I'm going to explain to you why this is so. Tune in to the next episode or the next episodes of Paratech 10 and I will go through this. Meanwhile, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and if you've got an EcoBoost Mustang, I am going to be recommending some websites for you to go to in the one that's going to give the power curves on the turbo housing mods. That should be coming up soon. So thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.